All right, everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, today, we are going to be going over the Free Worlds League and House Merrick. Uh, I have to admit off the bat that I really like this faction. In fact, they are my favorite in our Sphere Great House. So much of my passion may uh, come out of this video, and uh, so I apologize if um, I get carried away. Uh, and also apologies for the lack of kind of information on the uh, an informed opinion on the House Liao video they they really just kind of don't interest me as much as some of the other great houses so I I, I kind of just skimmed through it and um, uh, it kind of did a disservice to the video in and of itself and so it's not not my best work but anyway this one's about the free worlds league and house Merrick a faction I am happy to uh, uh, to inform you all that I know a bit more about it this would be a more uh, educated opinion uh, but with that being said without further ado let's move on to the Free Worlds League in the 3025 arrow. Uh, Yanos Smerik, the golden age of the FWL. Uh, future events leading to another shit show involving this faction uh, and how they operate kind of post FedCom Civil War. Uh, while those are all events to happen in the future, for the Battletech fan who never went past the 3025 era, how Smerik might indeed be the perfect faction. Um, there's not many uh, places in fiction that I'd want to live. But I think I'd enjoy life in the Free Worlds League in, in 3025, at least certain parts of it. Um, the vast majority of the realm isn't being invaded like the Capellans. Uh, House Steiner's more focused on uh, the Combine. Uh, and even if they were invaded, their military is pretty much second to none. Um, they have competent generals, they have very skilled individual mech warriors, solid supply lines, a strong industrial base, uh, lack of PPCs aside. Um, indeed, uh, as the memes say, Merrick's worst enemy's Merrick. Uh, you're more likely to deal, be fighting, you know, Regulans and Andurians in the Free Worlds League than any anyone else uh, in, in 3025, anyway. And uh, again, it's not great times, but for the era of 3025, the tightness of the lore, the the character of the faction, it's. It's even in 3025, they're still my favorite Intersphere House faction, and, th and that that continues on for the whole of the setting. In in my opinion, I don't think they ever kind of lose that magic of, of what the Free Worlds League is. But um, you know, it's it's still uh not perfect. Again, you know they're. As, as over-exaggerated as the meme culture is in Battletech, uh, Merrick, at least in 3025 especially, uh, most, of their, most of their lore is about them fighting themselves. But now we go to the clan invasion, moving on to the 3050s. Um, so this will be the fourth faction, who I say benefits from the clan invasion. To be fair, it's because I've only covered some rumored factions. Um... But much like Liao and uh, House Riley and um, uh, kind of Davion, <laughs> a, l a little bit, but they, they really did fight the clan, so not, not too much. They did lose manpower. Um, but the interjection of clan tech and the draining of the uh, traditional enemies' resources, manpowers, and industrial bases, huge benefit to the FWL. Uh, in fact, they go on to surpass the Lyran Commonwealth and GDP industry and, and exporting of like mechs and stuff. Uh, by the by, the 3060s, they they become the economic top dog, um, and in fact, if thir if uh, certain things weren't about to go catastrophically wrong for the faction, um, I'd say Thomas Merrick uh, is pro would probably have been the best Merrick up until this point. Um, he had had absolutely stately leadership, really shrewd politicking. He he made the FWL look competent and threatening to their enemies, um, but of course, this isn't going to last long. Um, and by the end of the era and the, and the start of the FedCom Civil War, we get um, the, the probably the worst uh, awful uh, subversion slash, I, I mean, I don't even know if it's a subversion. It's, it's, it's just so, oh, it's just so devastatingly awful. And, um, and it happens in one of the like throwaway novels for like Victor Steiner freaking Davion. And of course, uh, if you if you know you know, but uh, if not, then prepare for spoilers. But I refer to fake Merrick, which leads me into the FWL and the FedCom Civil War era, because I have to talk about fake Merrick, and I absolutely hate everything about fake Merrick. 
Um, it makes everybody in this faction uh, look like an absolute fool. Uh, in, in fact, one of my favorite characters, um, after reading a couple of superfluous sort of pointed out materials, and um, of course the legendary Razor Fist, making it very, very easy for me to approach uh, two novels in specific, the Mech Warrior Ghost of, uh, Ghost of Winter, and uh, of course this one, because it involves Thomas Merrick himself, uh, ju uh, a just war. Or uh, justified war. I think it's a just war. And but I really enjoyed the character of Blake Masters. I really liked him in that book. I thought, wow, you know, this this is a guy who's who's in an interesting sort of position with with his nation, his culture, and where he is as a noble and all that, and what he, you know, wants. And right, it, it paints a compelling picture for this character. He he had he's a, he's a character, right? And and the the text, you know, again, because this was a writer who wasn't uh, a mainstay writer, so of course, you know, his, his character isn't, doesn't get the luxury of consistency because he gets taken over by other writers. I understand this, but it, it just sucks because in his initial outing, he's written as a smart, competent character. He, he isn't an idiot, and it's, it's just really unfortunate because this later revelation makes him look like a total moron. Uh, especially because of how they do it, it's it's not like it, it, there's no other way to 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 kind of stay, say it than he he couldn't recognize a dude who he was supposed to be friends with this, from like a child. It's like it's 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 ridiculous. It's really insane. Um, <laughs> like again, how many people end up looking like absolute fools in the FWL? Because again, Thomas Merrick has been ruling for like. Like, 20 years at this point when this reveal gets... He's been ruling as Thomas Merrick for, like, 20 years. It's not It's not like these people have, like, only only been seeing him for months and now their suspicions are getting confirmed. It's like, no, they've talked to this guy for decades. He's not been who he says he's been for decades, you know, according... Right, I mean, I say according to it because I... Personally, me, I would I would excise this portion of the lore or I would... I would change it to where he's, he's a clone, right? They, they clone Thomas Merrick and... And they kind of, you know, flash, flash fry his brain onto the clone and then kind of send him back out. And they're just like, no, no, you told you're, you know, you're out of the hospital, you're in a coma, but, you know, now you're good and, and all this. And he, and he, you know, the, the clone himself is like, you know, no, I'm the real guy. Like, like, I insist I'm the real guy. This is some cyborg, you know, clone guy that they got over there calling himself Master Thomas Merrick. You, you know, that, that could work. That actually could make uh, a really compelling uh, character conflict. We're coming to terms with, oh shit, you know, maybe I am the clone, but, you know, uh, fuck it, who cares, right? Like, I'm, I view myself as myself, and, and you know, I, right, if, if he were me and in my position, he'd react the same as me, and so it makes it tough to fight himself, but it, it right, it could just, it could add layers to Thomas Merrick and make him really, really interesting. And that's not what they do, though. Um, that <laughs> freaking hack who did the, the actual fake Thomas Merrick stuff, I don't think they, I don't think he cared about, um, the Free Worlds League. I think he cared about Victor Steiner Davion. But, um, <laughs> because again, the only thing I can say during the Fedcom Civil War for the Free Worlds League is that they're dealing with, but they're dealing with the um, Word of Blake and the Word of Blake's intrusion on, uh, and not, I'm sorry, not their intrusion, but, but dealing with their kind of unrest in Gibson and, and how that's going to affect the Free Worlds League at large. Um, and it's again very very insular focused on the politics but their their relationship with their neighbors is actually pretty peaceful uh again they're in an alliance with the capellans um and, and let's be real if the if the free worlds league were bullying the capellans at this point they they would just they would just eat what was left of the of the of the sea calf um <laughs> they, the capellans need, needed all the help they could get uh, a little line in the BattleTech video game that was absolutely correct was, uh, was the House Capellans during the after the Fourth Succession where they were I mean, they were screwed, um, although they were they were doing better by the time of um, of the 3060s. So uh, you know we have them being cool with uh, their Cape the Capellan neighbors who are who are probably their most volatile border. Um, I know that they, there's a long history of them battling Steiner, but uh, it, it always feels like whenever they're at war, it's always a formality, like, you know, a couple of systems get traded, but it's never too, like, fearsome or, like, hateful. You never, you know, they're certainly not friends, but you never get the idea that, you know, you don't see these huge salience, you know, not until, um, 
the the ill clan and, and even and even once we start going into the the, the jihad which uh, again this is an era for the free worlds league um going by the actual lore here they end up getting sort of split um in half between the the fake thomas merrick or her who becomes thomas hallis hughes to differentiate him from the uh thomas the master merrick who becomes the leader of the ward of blake which again is just really dumb because you know thomas hallis hughes is some like regulin prince who like took the job and was sworn to secrecy or something again they like the fact that they don't even clone the guy is just it's just so stupid um but <laughs> so we have so we have these kind of two factions of Merrick, uh, you know, the factions that are more sympathetic with Ward of Blake, or are dissatisfied with Hallis Hughes, um, right? A lot of them tend to join the Blakists, and then uh, the ones who are kind of anti-Blake, or sort of more in line with, um, right, with, with what Hallis Hughes has in mind for what the Free Worlds League is, uh, they, they join his side. And so again, surprise, surprise, there's a civil, there's a Merrick Civil War. <laughs> uh -huh. Although again, Hallis Hughes is a fake Merrick, so it's really not a Merrick Civil War. But it is a Free Worlds League Civil War. Uh, and again, the Jihad, the Coalition, we have Devil and Stone, all that fun stuff happens. But uh, because the Free Worlds League is the host nation of the Jihad, and again, it's it's Thomas, it's Merrick who's the leader of it, um, the Free Worlds League balkanizes. And it's, and it's really dumb. Uh, uh, yeah, I, again, I, I don't think anybody who's a fan of House Merrick and the Free Worlds League is a fan of the Jihad or the Jihad era. I think most of them like to move on and forget it, um, and certainly for the faction I do too, although I don't hate the idea of, or, or the concept of the era, but, um, whenever I get to the, my video about kind of lore retconning or, um, sort of dm fiat or or you know uh, a kind of fan intervention on certain aspects of the lore it, 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 at least by certain strict what i would deem standards because there's a lot of lore that especially during fedcom civil war starts to become very uh i mean you even see it in the clans quite frankly but but it becomes very um outside of the specter of of the realism that 3025 kind of encompassed and how 3025 fit right everything had a balance and it wasn't just balanced in terms of the game because the game was balanced but it was balanced in terms of the lore the numbers um how it made sense that your own characters could fit in and you know where they would go in the uh, in the setting and how it would right everything just had it, it, it made a lot more sense right it could all fit together it could all be you really could participate in the setting with your little mech warrior campaign set in the terran hegemony or i'm sorry not the terran hegemony the marian hegemony in the 3030s or the 3035s right and it and you could, you know, help the Marian hegemony establish itself as a proper periphery, you know, kingdom and and help it develop its credentials in its own local areas and, and all that. And and how, you know, uh, just right, you could do any number of campaigns and in, in, in the periphery or out in a certain remote section. And it could be canon because everything was fit and accounted for. And the, right, the DM could be really tight with how it's all supposed to to kind of mesh in with itself and and even if your players did want to affect with these kind of big battles or whatever you know you almost as a dm could like punish them by putting them in it right and being like okay well <laughs> this is how many or you can almost list to them what the battle sticks are and they'd be like oh my god we're gonna be here for like three freaking weeks uh with, <laughs> with how slow the, the battle tech rule system is um at, at least the modern catalyst one if you're if you're playing with uh most of the modern rules and you're, especially if you don't know what you're doing like me uh so but anyway, off off track and, and on on focus, the jihad era is not good. Um, getting into the dark age, uh, which was written at the same time as the jihad, kind of conceived at the same time. Um, it, it's weird because the same 
Well, it actually doesn't feel like it's the same people who wrote the Jihad and the Dark Age, because things get wildly different but with a lot of factions. But anyway, the, the Free Worlds League story during the Dark Age is is repairing the, the balkanization that the Jihad leaves it in. And it, it, it kind of makes for interesting stuff, um, and, and I think the best part about this era, especially for House Merrick and the Free Worlds League, is that Halus Hughes dies. Um, we're dealing with fresh Merricks. Uh, they they finish, uh, you know, they, they kind of unite the two houses, making, you know, do, do, doing away with this whole, oh, there's two house Merricks stuff. Like, they, they wrap all that up. Um, but the problem is, is that that's, that's the whole story of Merrick during the Dark Age. Like, that is the story, is, is like, hey, here's a lot of boring setup for, like, the next era that's actually going to matter, which is supposed to be the Ill Clan, but, you know, we're... We're still, we're still, like, that's fingers crossed, right? We're still waiting on if that's actually going to be good or not, because it, it, I keep, I keep seeing these, like, golden line turds. It's, 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 it's upsetting, right? There's, there's, or, or, or it'll be a statue of gold, and then, like, right, right at the altar where the hands are holding, and then it'll be, like, what's this supposed to be this important thing, and then, like, right, right at the altar, you know, where it's supposed, to, it's, it's a ball of shit. Just shit ball, right? And that's that's like that's like Dominions divided, or that's like House Merrick in in, in Oakland with 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 Nicole Merrick. It's like, oh, they, you know, they've they've reformed. They're actually back to a pretty mighty faction. They're in a position now where they can you know retake a lot of uh, territory that's been lost due to the effects of that balkanization and the consequences of it. And uh, what happens if they get a terrible leader? They get a terrible leader who's holding them back from being able to to win, right? Because of writer fiat, because... And it's already becoming a joke, uh, without even me properly addressing the Ill Clan era for the, uh, Free Worlds League. Uh, you know, Nicole Merrick, throughout the whole of Empire alone, which is the Free Worlds League sourcebook uh, in Ill Clan right now, the, the the one, if you really want to skim me on what's going on. 30, 31, 51. Nicole Merrick see, is seemingly unable to even do her job. She... She has this thing, and, and, and I think a lot of fans have nailed it on the head where they're saying, well, she can't do something that's at the detriment of Clan Wolf because the writers wouldn't allow that. Or or in the source books, they write about how she is a great leader and all that stuff, and, and, and it's like, well, yeah, because the source books are written by, by a bunch of Clan Wolf people, and they love Nicole because everything she did benefited Clan Wolf. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, that kind of seems to be what's happening here, because she's certainly not benefiting the Free Worlds League. Um, and and to, to people who are unaware, Clan Wolf ends up invading a vast, vast majority of the uh, Free Worlds League territories that are, that are between them and Steiner. And it's a huge, gigantic chunk of the Free Worlds League. Uh, and I mean, like, gigantic. Like, it's just a giant circle. And... And I think they even turn on Steiner and take take some a bunch of Steiner territory too, but it, it, but but it's you know they they're only there for like you know it's, I think less than thirty years or something like that or the the wolf wolf isn't there in the in the quote unquote wolf empire for for super long like it might be fifty years at max, and um, I, I don't I don't quite know I don't I don't remember exactly when during the Dark Age that that happens because the Dark Age is like fifty years. Um, it's like 3090 to like 3040 or something. Or 3140. And so these are still, you know, a lot of these people are still Free Worlds League citizens, right? Like, or, or they're the children of Free Worlds League citizens. And, and they culturally remember the Free Worlds League. And they're and they're being oppressed by clanners. And, and I mean, like, genuinely oppressed. I mean, I the, the fact, I, I genuinely refer to Big Red 40k as, as at least something of an authority on the lore, because I, I feel like he at least knows more than I do. And when I ask him the question, I pose the question, does the Marian hegemony treat its citizens better than the wolf, than the subjects of the Wolf Empire? And he and he not only agrees with that sentiment, he's he's like, yeah, that's that's pretty much what the story alludes to so far. You know, the clan wolf has treated its subjects terribly. They they absolutely look down on the inner sphere inner sphere spheroids. And, and Nicole, like, just is like, you know, why why are we in a rush to take these cities? It's like, what the f- what's wrong? Wh like, it, it's so bizarre. 
because it's even it's even worse than like saying oh well it's like churchill not wanting to fight the nazis it's it's like it's like if it's like if the nazis touched down and occupied london or something right and then and then churchill's like where and then and, and, and they've held it for like <laughs> freaking like a year or something like that or like two years or something and churchill's like you know why? What's the Russian taking back London? It's it's like you're you'd want to strangle the person. You'd want to you, any world leader who did that would be immediately removed. They just there's no there's no rhyme or reason or, or way that it's okay that Nicole can act like this and, and at least not get massive massive pushback. Let alone get told in the source books about how she's this like competent and like stern and strong leader. Um, and then to have that actually, like, contradicted in the novels where she's just, you know, clearly not a strong leader. She's clearly got a lot of, um, things, like, back and forth in her own head. And, like, right, she can kind of barely stand uh, to, to see people she's slighted in the past and stuff. And it's like, where she's got a lot of anxiety, right? This isn't a strong leader. It's like having to muster up the courage for you to do a social function isn't, like, strength. You know what I mean? Like, strength is, like... Oh shit! I have to I have to fight you know uh, an overwhelming odds of you know uh, the, the Wolf Empire right because they've touched down on on uh, the the you know oh god damn it I, I I I'm such a big House Merrick fan in Free World's League but I completely forgot what their uh, what their capital is called I want to call it Atreus but that's that's wrong I know it's wrong um, I'll, I'll I'll probably do a little texting here where I get get the correct uh, capital but anyway right it, it, it it'd be like it. it be like that that that's a test of strength right where where she'd have to pilot her you know uh, the ancestral merrick uh, awesome right and then and then go out swinging in a blaze of glory and you know her her son cries a you know a, the manly tear at, you know as he's, as he's 13 and lifted off and made an orphan but, you know because the house how, you know uh, evil alaric ward is punishing the free world's league for right okay then you can sit there and talk about how she's this like brave stoic you know captain but as it stands right now really really not at all how she how she is um just <laughs> yeah just just a, not a not a great house lord um again she the fact she punishes the dukes and and other free world's league military personnel who are acting on their own to liberate this lost territory it, it, like she just does bonker stuff and and it's it's frustrating because again if if, if there was if there was a legitimate reason, right, where where it's like, oh, well, you know, Wolf only took two-thirds of their military and there's still enough military to put up a significant resistance and she's worried about, you know, the magistracy of Canopus, you know, right, you know, her getting sandwiched or whatever and, and she doesn't have all the info or whatever. But that's not what happens. That's not what they do. Instead, she's like, well, I don't want to provoke Wolf until something happens and then Wolf because I, I kind of skimmed I'm not going to lie I didn't read the Empire Alone uh, uh, sections involving Clan Wolf I really didn't care um, but I know that one of one of her uh, friends dies during the storyline in Wolf and that's that's what triggers her that's what triggers Nicole into finally declaring war into finally deciding that enough's enough and enough people have died and all that and it's, it's such a flimsy excuse for for you know what is supposed to be her, you know, her, her strong will or whatever. But um, again, I'm not going to do a, a prediction for what happens to this faction here. Um, it's it's honestly it's tough to tell with Nicole. I, I want to say they crush Wolf and take back all that territory, and uh, you know, kind of send Wolf packing onto that border with Steiner and. And you know the Free Worlds League is purple bird strong and, and doing good, but uh, but you know I I don't know after Dominion's divided cer certainly the clans aren't going to be able to deal with with Alaric Ward and Clan Wolf. He's got too much plot armor, right? He's just too cool, right? For all the clanners, it's got to be a Sphere faction that beats him. But I I I don't see the I, I see the first two Sphere factions that fight Clan Wolf get jobbed and so I, I i say capellans are gonna get jobbed and then it's whoever fights clan wolf next and i think whoever fights clan wolf next is probably going to be they're probably going to be a smaller faction i'm, I'm not gonna uh, i'll be honest it'll probably be a smaller newer faction that comes like balkanized it might even be might even claim probably you know it might it might even be um 
uh, Wolf's Dragoons. Actually, it'll it'll be Wolf's Dragoons fights Alaric Ward, and uh, Alaric Ward stops the Capellans, right? But the Wolf's Dragoons, while while they don't win, uh, they also don't lose. But while Alaric Ward doesn't lose. He also, or, or while Alric, Alric Ward kind of wins, but doesn't lose or whatever, right? Like it's it's kind of a draw. I I'll, I can see that happening. I see I see I see those two factions at least set up, and then beyond those predictions, I don't I don't know, but I can I can at least safely say at least those two factions will be will be there. And Wolf's Dragoons, I don't think will get job because they're Wolf's Dragoons. That'd be that would be too offensive. Um, and also they're they they got that plot armor for wolves, and so. Um, but you know. Uh, for the Free Worlds League, I have no idea. It's kind of up in the air. It's it's all it's all up to Nicole Merrick and how the writers decide to keep writing her. You know, hey, hopefully she gets better, but I, I you know I don't think so. I think she's going to keep being a, a, a kind of wreck of a character, and then the the source of material is going to turn around and be like, oh yeah, she's such a strong and wise leader. But anyway, we'll, we'll have to see what the future unfolds. But uh, anyway, uh, y'all have a good one, and I'll see y'all later.